You are standing at the precipice of an impossible fact. From your own first-person perspective, the probability of your death might effectively be zero. We begin not with comfort, but with a cold mathematical calculation that threatens to dismantle your understanding of mortality. Imagine you are seated in a quiet room. Across from you is a device of terrifying simplicity. It is a quantum trigger, a machine linked to the spin of a single electron. If the spin is measured as up, a firing pin strikes and you die instantly. If the spin is down, the mechanism clicks harmlessly. According to the standard rules of probability, the odds are 50-50. You take a breath. You initiate the sequence. Click. You are alive. You do it again. Click. Alive. You do it ten times, a hundred times. To an observer watching from behind a glass wall, this is a statistical absurdity. After 50 attempts, the odds of you surviving are one in a quadrillion. To them, you should be dead. In fact, in the vast majority of timelines, you are dead. But you are not the observer behind the glass. You are the subject in the chair. And this is where the universe fractures. In the standard Copenhagen interpretation of quantum mechanics, the wave function collapses. The universe chooses a state, dead or alive, and discards the other. But in 1957, physicist Hugh Everett proposed the many worlds interpretation, a theory that suggests the wave function never collapses. Instead, reality simply branches. Every quantum event splits the universe into non-communicating parallel histories. In one branch, the electron spin was up, the gun fired, and your consciousness ceased. In the other, the spin was down, and you heard a click. Here is the glitch, the anomaly that defines your existence. You cannot experience a universe where you are not present. It is a tautology of consciousness. You can only observe reality from a platform where you exist to do the observing. Therefore, when the universe splits into a dead branch and a living branch, your conscious experience is mathematically constrained to flow entirely into the branch where you survive. The dead you experiences nothing. There is no darkness, no void, just a cessation of the data stream. But the living you continues uninterrupted, remembering a sequence of miraculous survivals. This is the quantum suicide thought experiment, formalized by Max Tegmark. It implies that no matter how risky the event, whether it is a game of Russian roulette or a car crash, there will always be a slice of the probability amplitude, however thin, where the quantum coins land in your favor. You are the statistical anomaly that simply refused to be deleted. You are walking down a hallway of infinite doors, and while billions of them lead to oblivion, you are constitutionally incapable of walking through them. You are forced by the anthropic principle to open the only door that leads to tomorrow. To the outside world, you are a corpse in a failed experiment. But to yourself, trapped in the first-person perspective, you are anomalously, impossibly lucky. You are the sole survivor of a massacre that occurs every fraction of a second, riding the crest of a wave function that can never, ever let you go. From that paradox emerges a horror that makes finality look like a mercy. If the logic of the many worlds interpretation holds, we must confront the concept of the entropy trap. We have established that your consciousness must continue into a timeline where it exists. But here is the terrifying variable we forgot to isolate. Survival is not the same thing as health. Survival is not the same thing as well-being. The mathematics of quantum mechanics cares only about the non-zero probability of a conscious state. It does not care about the quality of that state. As you age, your biological machinery begins to fail. Cells degrade, DNA accumulates errors, and organs falter. In a singular, classical timeline, you would eventually reach a point where the probability of your continued biological function hits absolute zero. You would die. But in a branching multiverse, probability is an asymptote. It approaches zero, but it never quite touches it. 
there is always an infinitesimally small fraction of the wave function where a neuron misfires in just the right way to keep the heart beating. There is always a freak thermal fluctuation that keeps the brain oxygenated for one more second. This is where the theory turns from a blessing into a curse. You might find yourself shifting into timelines where you are incredibly ancient, suffering from the ravages of extreme entropy, yet unable to reach the release of death. Why? Because a branch exists where you cling to life and you are forced to experience it. You become a prisoner of probability. Imagine a version of yourself at 120 years old, then 150. Your body is a wreck of failing systems, a ship of Theseus made of pain and glitching biology. In billions of parallel worlds, you have passed away peacefully. Your family has mourned and moved on. But you are not in those worlds. You are trapped in the outlier, the timeline where medical technology advanced just enough to keep a shred of your consciousness anchored to a decaying form. This is quantum hell. You are destined to become the oldest, most improbable observer in a dying universe. The world around you may become unrecognizable, a fever dream of high-probability disasters that you somehow survived, leaving you in a reality that feels increasingly alien. You are the last observer, watching the stars burn out, tethered to existence by the cruel fact that the probability of life never completely vanishes. You are not living, you are statistically lingering. We often fear death because we view it as an abyss, a thief of time. But the quantum immortality paradox suggests that we should fear physics because it might deny us the end. It implies that silence is a luxury we might never be allowed to afford. So, the next time you survive a close call, a swerving car, a missed step, a sudden illness that vanishes, do not call it a miracle. Call it the selection bias of a trapped observer. You are still here because, in the ruthless calculus of the multiverse, you literally have nowhere else to go.